Okay, well, Wi-Fi is becoming much more important for mobile operators, and most of them across the globe are doing it to offload data from congested 3G networks. Uh, here at EE, we put together the T-Mobile and the Orange networks in 2010 um, on 3G. We're the first operator to launch a 4G network in the UK, which we did in October last year. So my network colleagues are saying, we don't have an overloaded network, we're not deploying Wi-Fi, therefore, for congestion or offload reasons. We're doing it because our customers like to use Wi-Fi. Um, they have data bundles for us, and if they're getting anywhere near those data bundles, they'd like to use free Wi-Fi, and therefore, there's a benefit to our customers. There's also a big benefit for venue owners who offer Wi-Fi in terms of the data they can collect and the marketing opportunities that that then opens up to them. Um, whether 4G will get to offload net traffic? Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> everybody thought 3G was the be all and end all, um, but you give people access to data and they tend to use it. And we'll see much more use of video, which will eat bandwidth. Yes, our 4G network at the moment has bundles of bandwidth available, but as we put millions of customers on it, I'm sure at some point that will get congested, therefore Wi-Fi will still be required, even when we get the next generation, which we'll probably call 5G. At some point, we will start to eat into that. We'll have applications that'll just need more and more data. So yes, I think Wi-Fi is here to stay. Well, our, our venue partners are obviously looking to offer their customers access to the internet. It's the basic service they want to offer, but it's for a whole variety of reasons. Some of them are looking to do it to let people price compare in their venue and hopefully persuade you to buy there and then rather than going home and purchasing the product on the internet. Others are doing it to collect data on you so that they can give you more personalized offers. Um, that's got to be done carefully because some of the information they're getting could offer you a discount on wine whilst you're in the wine department. And Big Brother is almost watching you and people would be a little worried about that. So you've got to treat the data carefully. But particularly when you look at a mobile operator like us, we can combine the data from a Wi-Fi venue with our wider data. And we can tell venues, well, where did the people in that store, where do they work? Because we can look at their mobile patterns during the day. Where do they live? Because we have the mobile patterns in the evenings and weekends, and potentially also how do they get to that venue? So there's a wealth of data, particularly combining mobile and Wi-Fi data for a venue owner. Uh, since we opened our 4G network, uh, we haven't seen a great deal of change in the Wi-Fi usage. Um, the amount of data that our customers use on 4G is significantly higher than they used on 3G. You get a better experience, you can watch you know, streaming video very easily on it. But again, a large proportion of our Wi-Fi usage is at home or at work, mm -hmm. which continues exactly the same. And they're still using roughly the same amount in um, public locations. Mm -hmm. So no, not a great deal of change other than their usage overall is going up still. Mm -hmm. Looking at seamless um, integration of the cellular and the Wi-Fi infrastructures is a goal we would want to get to. We probably see it still being about two years away um, and probably needs us to bring all of the Wi-Fi traffic into our core network so that we can manage that experience for the customer. Um, it, it is a goal, we would love to see it and be able to put our customers on the best network. Um, some of the testing we have done where handsets automatically go to Wi-Fi, um, in probably 50% of the cases, even on our 3G network, that was the wrong decision. They would have got a better service on our 3G network. With our 4G network, particularly it being fairly uh, unused at the moment, we probably think about 80% of times they'd get a better experience on LTE 
rather than going over straight over to Wi-Fi. So mm. we'd like to give our customers the best network with an override, because if they're at the limit of their um, bundle, they may accept a lower level Wi-Fi network than a higher level LTE network, if one's going to cost some money and the other isn't. Uh, to, to enable better service for users at the moment, virtually every handset defaults to Wi-Fi. Um, we'd like that to be changed, uh, but it needs probably a network to then intervene, probably using ANDSF type technology in our network that looks at the point in time when you want to do something, what's the quality of the 3G, 4G and Wi-Fi in your in area, and we'll let you know which we think you should be on. Mm -hmm. um, and automatically put you there unless you want to override it. So that probably is a network functionality rather than a handset functionality. But we need the handset manufacturers to take off the automatic default to a Wi-Fi network. Now we understand why that was there when you only had 2G. It was clear Wi-Fi was going to be a better experience. Not quite the same when you've got an LTE network. Um, your experience will get better, the APs will get better, people will put lots more backhaul in to actually give a better experience, um, but it's variable. There are an awful lot more Wi-Fi operators than there are cellular operators. Cellular being licensed spectrum, we only have four uh, operators here in the UK. There must be a dozen or more Wi-Fi operators, all with very pieces of equipment out there, different backhauls. So it, it is always probably going to be a more variable experience than if you are with one of the four cellular operators. Mm -hmm. um, now, now that the mobile operators are, dare I say, coming back into or starting with Wi-Fi deployments, which they weren't previously, uh, I think you'll find that the big operators, whether they're mobile or fixed or broadband operators, will begin to dominate. Um, A, because we have scale. You know, we can run tens of thousands of hotspots. Um, we have all the back office systems that allow you to do that. We've got contact centers that operate 24-7. Um, the regulatory regime is getting a lot tougher as well in terms of data retention and lawful intercept of which the big operators have the systems that can provide that. So I think you'll find that it will get more and more dominated by probably six or seven fixed broadband or mobile companies. So events such as the Wi-Fi Global Congress are extremely important. The market is moving so fast. You have to try and keep up with what's going on. And the best place to do that is where everybody congregates in one place. A, to listen, to see what you can find out, but B, to have then the one-to-one -one meetings that you just wouldn't get done because they take too much time on a uh, please come and see me or I'll come and see you basis. You can get 15, 20 meetings done in a space that you'd normally get one or two done. So they are extremely important in keeping abreast of what's happening and uh, meeting people.